Okay, so let's start talking about the next steps now. These next steps are called the electron transport chain, abbreviated as ETC. And the electron transport chain is located across the inner mem oops, is located across the inner membrane of our mitochondria. All of those reduced compounds, all the NADHs, all the FADH, FADH2s, we are sending them towards the electron transport chain in order to, uh, to, to use them to help synthesize energy. So let's go into a little bit more detail about how the electron transport, cha how the electron transport chain works so that we can synthesize some ATP. Okay, so here we go, electron transport chain. When we partner the electron transport chain with ATP synthase, which we'll talk about in our next slide, together those are called oxidative phosphorylation. So you may have seen that word before in previous classes or in your textbook. But right now, let's focus on the electron transport chain. So we, um, so I told you that the electron transport chain is abbreviated as ETC. What exactly it is, is a series of protein complexes that live on this inner mitochondrial membrane. So we can see them here. What happens is our reduced compound, for example, our NADH, is going to arrive at the electron transport chain and it is going to now get oxidized. It is going to donate its electrons, its hydrogen, to the electron transport chain. Now, what the electron transport chain is going to do with that hydrogen is it is going to rip it apart. Remember that a hydrogen is composed of a proton and an electron. So when NADH donates its hydrogen to the electron transport chain, that hydrogen is going to get ripped apart. The electron transport chain is going to pump the proton part up into that inner membrane space, that inner membrane space between the two layers of mitochondrial membrane. So there's our protein up here, or sorry, our proton up here. And then the electron transport chain is gonna hold on to the electron, which we can see here in green. And essentially what the electron transport chain is going to do now is it's gonna take that electron and it's gonna kind of play volleyball or hot potato with it. And it's going to pass that electron across these different uh, protein complexes of the electron transport chain. It's, it's always kind of going downhill a little bit. And then finally, the um, electron, uh, the final destination of that electron is that it is going to get added to some oxygen in order to make water. And so oxygen is the final electron acceptor of this electron transport chain. And this is actually why we need to breathe oxygen because in, uh, oxygen is the final acceptor of the electron in the electron transport chain. Now, the other thing that I pointed out here is that this pro these protons and electrons, they really want to get back together. There's a very, um, they are, you know, the electron is negatively charged, the proton is positively charged, they really want to be together. However, they are being ripped apart and forced into separate spaces. So there's a big potential energy drive for the protons to get back with the electrons again. Okay, so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail now this time more focused on what's going on with those protons. So we have funneled a whole bunch of reduced compounds, a whole bunch of NADH, a whole bunch of FADH2 from the Krebs cycle over to the electron transport chain along this inner mitochondrial membrane. When we deliver that hydrogen to the electron transport chain, again, it rips apart that hydrogen into the electron and the proton. All of those protons are gonna be getting pumped into this inner membrane space. The more protons that we get in there, the higher the concentration of protons in this inter inner membrane space. It's really creating a huge concentration gradient. High concentration of protons in the inter inner membrane space, low concentration of protons inside the matrix. Now again, remember that these compounds, they are gonna be seeking equilibrium. The protons want to be in equal concentration across this membrane. Furthermore, those protons, they wanna get back with their negatively charged electron. So this is a high amount of potential energy that is being held within this inner membrane space. The pot potential energy is coming from the fact that we have a very high concentration of protons in here versus low concentration of protons in our inner membrane space, 
plus these protons, they really want to get back with the negatively charged electrons. So we have lots of potential energy here. And now in the next step with ATP synthase, we are gonna harness that potential energy of the high concentration of protons. We're gonna harness that potential energy in order to synthesize ATP. 